With Salesforce Flow becoming the main declarative automation tool in Salesforce, it should come as no surprise that the time has come for it to offer approval process specific functionality rather than just invoking an already existing approval process through an action. As if Spring 25 wasn't already packed with flow updates, ranging from the real-time field validation in screen flows to the ability to join collections with the transform element, the newest addition of approval orchestration flow types will excite Salesforce professionals. This new flow type scatter for all approval-related needs within the org and can account for both simple and complex requirements, including Salesforce only or external users and external systems too. Even if these will be orchestrations, there will be no automation credit consumption involved and can be used just as an approval process at no extra cost. However, you can't count on bringing the best of Salesforce's innovations to your customers without talented professionals to assess, implement, and customize them, right? Well, that doesn't have to be a pain point anymore with this video's sponsor, Tecla. Stay on track with top-tier Salesforce admins, developers, and architects who are ready to integrate seamlessly within your team. Whether you're rolling out new features, optimizing automation, or tracking complex integrations, Tecla's vetted Salesforce specialists can help you get there without the long hiring cycles. Worried about time zones? Don't be. With Tecla's Nearshore network, you can scale your Salesforce team with experienced professionals in your time zone. Enjoy expert support whenever you need it. Interested? Find out more at salesforceband.com slash Tecla. You can find this link in the description below. When creating a new flow in a Spring 25 enabled org, you will notice the option to choose one of the following new flow types. Auto-launched approval orchestration, which can be triggered from other processes or even custom buttons, or the record triggered approval orchestration, which will be triggered based on the record to be sent for approval being created or updated. Stages and steps are the main building blocks of flow orchestration. Each stage can be customized into a multi-step process, allowing you to orchestrate screen flows or auto-launch flows that execute sequentially or in parallel based on the entry criteria you set for each step. The default setting for stage completion is when all the steps within that stage are finished, allowing the orchestration to proceed. However, this can be customized to require specific conditions to be met, or you can utilize an evaluation flow for more intricate requirements. Within each stage, you can choose between two types of steps. An approval step is the interactive step leveraged for the user action. This one requires a screen flow to be selected, which will be used when the step starts. This is also where the approvers can be selected and where you can choose to customize the notification they receive, lock the record, or even allow the approver to make edits to the record. The background step, on the other hand, is an automatically triggered step, more or less equivalent to workflow actions. This uses an auto-launch flow as the action that will be triggered and completed in the background with no user interaction. After each stage, you can choose to add a decision element, which allows the process to navigate through different stages based on criteria being met, making it easy to handle even the most intertwined approval scenarios while keeping the stages separated and easy to read when reviewing the overall flow. There are as many possible approval process scenarios as there are businesses, but all of them will progress similarly and ultimately lead to an approved or rejected outcome. To try this new functionality out, we took a basic example of an opportunity which should enter the approval workflow as soon as it's created, if the account type it is related to is already a customer account. In this case, we used the record trigger approval orchestration flow type 
and set the opportunity owner's manager as the approver, as you're going to see shortly. For this example, we will need a screen flow for the approver to input their decision and an auto launch flow to update an approval status field on the opportunity. This will be used within the approval step and background step respectively. Make sure to map out the process before you begin to ensure that the flows you need are active and ready to go by the time you start working on the actual orchestration. While you could build your own screen flow from scratch as long as you have the output variables ready to be used afterwards, Salesforce offers a readily available approvals workflow for the screen flow. Evaluate the approval request template. For the record triggered flow, however, it's a matter of creating the variables that will be needed. In this case, the first one is to store the opportunity ID and the other is to store the approval process outcome that is to be added to the field, followed by an update element. Once the flows are ready, it is time to move on to the actual approval orchestration within Flow Builder. The stage in this example will capture the manager's decision in an interactive approval step first. This step will start as soon as the stage begins and uses the screen flow as the action. If you choose to use a resource to determine the approver as we need to in this scenario, ensure that it contains the username of the desired approver and not the user ID. You can also set a user, queue, or even a group as the approver. Within this same approval step, the record to approve will be the opportunity record, which triggered the flow, and you can choose the locking behavior. For the step to be completed, the assigned user needs to complete the action, but for other use cases, you may want to select one of the other available options. The next step within the same stage is a background one, used to update the custom opportunity field with the outcome of the approval step, similar to how you would have done it with a field update in an approval process. The auto launch flow will be used for this step and the manager's decision will be found in the approval decision output variable coming from the screen flow in the step above. If you'd like to use other values than approve or reject for the field, you'll need to adapt them accordingly before the field update. In this step, you can also select when it starts, as well as the running user, be it the automated process user or a different one. With the approval orchestration ready and active, it's time to make it accessible to users. Approvers will receive an email and can respond using keywords, but if they need to approve directly within the user interface on the opportunity record, the flow orchestration work guide component must be added to the record page. Additionally, the component includes a useful setting that automatically hides the work guide when it's empty. The approval work items can also be made visible on individual records by adding the approval trace component on the record page, while the old approval history list is going to remain empty. Key information such as the status, any comments, and who the item was assigned to and reviewed by will be visible in the table as soon as the record enters the approval orchestration. To ensure that the new approval process works as intended, let's create an opportunity on an account that has the type set as customer direct. You'll notice that as soon as the opportunity is saved, the work guide appears and exposes the screen flow along the names of the process, stage, and step as selected because I am listed as the approver. Additionally, within the approval trace, you can already see the work item assigned to me. Alongside the flow approval orchestration capabilities, Salesforce is also introducing a central hub where both you and your users can see everything you need related to approvals. The new Lightning app offers readily available list views, which make navigation through approval submissions, approval submission details, and approval work items a breeze. The list views can be customized as needed if, for example, you would like to reorder the fields. 
Approval work items can easily be reassigned when necessary directly from the list view. Another user, group, or queue can be selected. Additionally, the work items can also be reviewed from the same view rather than users having to needlessly navigate to individual records. If you need to create reports instead of leveraging the readily available list views from the Approvals Lightning app though, it's not a problem. You can find the approval submissions, the approval submission details and the approval work items available for selection when creating a custom report type. So in case list views were not what you were looking for, the option to use reports is there. Managing all declarative automations natively in Flow Builder is a significant step forward for both Salesforce admins and users alike. From orchestrating stages and steps, deliberately setting entry and exit criteria, juggling variables to fit your use cases like a glove, and easily reviewing and actioning the approval work items, this new functionality checks all the boxes for you to try it out. Have you already explored these new capabilities? Let us know in the comments below.